Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Snipeskiller here and welcome back to another World of Tanks replay and today guys I am playing the AMX-30 first prototype, the tier 9 French medium tank and I'm going to be doing a little bit of unethical gameplay today, both for a good reason and for maybe even some bad reasons that you guys might think about. Now what I'm doing here is I'm playing on El Haluf on a nice encounter battle standard game thingy. And I'm going down onto this flank over here to just pretty much check it out. I never usually go onto this flank. I like to use the northern flank, maybe go on that nice B3 area to go hull down with the good gun depression that this tank has. But today I decided I would go to this side and I'm going to be fighting a T37. Being a top tank medium, or top tier medium tank I should say, I don't really feel like it's a good idea to go down and over here. Considering most of these shots here, I'm not really getting good hits on. I'm not hitting this T-37, I'm not really causing any damage to him. Luckily, my final shot there actually does connect with him. And here is going to be a turning point for the game. This is where the STI on the enemy team goes into pretty much the capture circle. And we're going to be seeing a lot of him later on. But for now, this is probably the most embarrassing part of the video. This gun has 260 millimeters of pen with standard APCR and I bounced off a tank that has probably like 50 millimeters of armor. That's kind of sad. I'm really disappointed that that shot didn't hit. Unable to reload there as he pulls back behind the rock. There's also an M41 90GF on that cliff over there. At least we'll be able to get some decent shots into him if he does end up pulling out. Now, is he going to pull out is the question. He does pull out. We fire a blind shot just as he disappears. Might have connected, might have not. The shells on this tank do travel very fast, so it is quite likely that we did hit him. Now, the 225 2 comes back into view. I'm not sure right here if I'm able to hit him, but I'm pretty sure he might pull out. So I get, a, I get set up and ready for just a nice little attack. Now, you guys can't really see it on the replay, but... Showing with XVM, it gives these little light bulb indicators for the tanks that have been spotted and the tanks that aren't spotted right now. And what what I know by just knowing that most of the lights are on slash off is that there's only the T69 and the M41 down here. So we're going to be easily able to clean them up here and just maybe help out our team on the north. They're not looking so good. Now look at this shot. This gun doesn't have the greatest accuracy, but it is pretty decent. Looks like the Amex 1390 and T37 can't quite take out the T69, so I pop over, put a shot into him before he can reload and maybe take out the 1390. So we've done a little bit of a good deed there. Now, considering I did say that most of the enemy tanks were spotted, they're all up in the north, pretty much fighting my, enemy, my friendly tanks. So. What I need to do is get into a position where I can potentially support them if they get overrun. And looking at the scores, 6-3, to three, we are still in the lead, but we're losing a lot of tanks up there really, really quick. And we're going to lose a lot more where that came from. But my main, my main concern right now is to get this STI, or ST1 if you prefer. I don't quite have a shot on him. So I do back up, trying to find shots on anything else. I do get a little bit of a shot here, decide not to take it because it wasn't fully aimed in. I'd rather get a nice damaging shot on him. Switch targets to the VK, doesn't look like he's poking over the ridge. Still looking at the STI, he is behind that hill. So I decide to cover the back of the IS. Now, there will be a T-49 coming down the hill. And you might be wondering why I don't fire sooner, is because I like to I like to be able to see my target before I shoot at them. So I wait for the T49 to be nice and visible. He goes in a straight line and I nicely take him out there. 
see the T-34-2, try and take a blind fire, considering we know he was there, probably either missed, hit the dirt, or hit his track, we will never know, but what we do know is that we need to get to a better position to take on this STI. So we're just going to climb the hill here real quick, maybe keep the turret nice and pointed towards him, which is a thing I'd like to do. If you're running away from enemy tanks and you don't exactly know where they are, or you think they might come up behind you, it's always a good idea to point your turret towards them. So I keep my turret nice and pointed down there. Maybe if the STI poked out, I might be able to shoot him. If anybody else came down, I might be able to shoot him. And just try and cover myself as I get up into the higher ground. You see an IS-2 over here, the Scorpion. Good player and the M41 are trying to take him out. I try and get a shot on him just in case they can't take him out. But the M41, Shoddy44, who is going to be a very big help in this game, nicely takes him out. We get a nice little view on the SDI here. Now, 260 millimeters of pen is pretty decent when you're fully aimed in. When you're shooting like that, even down on an STI when you're not completely full, fully aimed in, it's probably more than likely going to bounce. And that shot was kind of a, an iffy shot. It was still worth a try though. So I switched to heat, knowing I want to pen this guy. I want to take him out. Get a nice shot there. Very lucky that that hit and penetrated. Looked like it was maybe aiming a little bit up towards his turret, but I think maybe it hit like of his upper hull. And considering we are higher than him, if we hit his upper hull, we're going to have a way better chance to penetrate it, considering it's a lot flatter. Now, considering I did go to the eastern side of the map, the side of the map I don't really go to, kind of an unethical gameplay for me, I conserved a lot of my hit points, and this is exactly why I conserved my hit points. We are going to have a lot of trouble here. And surprise T30. Bam, there goes half my health. Bam, there goes another chunk of health. Go over the ridge, try and get the T30, and surprise S51. Knowing the T30's on reload, I take out the S51. Quite a good choice there. T30 will never be able to reload before I do. And I'm able to take him out. So maybe going to the east was the better play to do here, considering I did conserve a lot of my hit points, and I was able to take those hits. If I had lost a lot of hit points back down there, that T-30 would have obliterated me, and the outcome of this battle would have been a lot different. So, what is going to happen next? Well, considering STI, he's just been in the cap circle the whole game. We know the Rev and the T-34-2 went after the Ferdinand, so they're on the further side of the map. Still somewhat within our view range, or the, uh, the view cap, I should say. And I really don't want to get spotted by the ST-1. I know the Rev has, I believe, 390 Alpha. He'll be able to take me out in more than likely one shot. T-34-2 will probably take two shots, and the VK, if he's using the big gun, will be able to take me out in one shot, regardless of his damage roll. So I don't really have any shots on the STI over there, and I'm thinking that the VK is going to be coming around any second now, considering he was spotted down by the A6 area. So I'm thinking he's going to be pulling around that corner, and so I set up and I get ready for him. Now Shoddy here is going to do a very nice thing that really actually contributes to the outcome of this game. He's going to actually go around and go and check to see if the VK is coming. Now this is going to give me a good indication of the VK being there, maybe even coming around a different way, and what kind of gun he's using. And this is where we know that we can take him out. Shoddy gets hit for a 301 damage roll, and that means that the VK is not even using the good, I believe, 128 that you get on the Moss? I'm I think it's the 128 that you get on the Moss, so he's not using the good gun, which is actually really good for us, because considering we only have around 400 health, he won't be able to take us out in one hit, even, I believe, if he rolls high. You'd have to get really lucky to roll that high. So we switch back to Heat as well, and knowing again that the VK is actually around there, and he might come after the M41, I line up a shot, I tell the shoddy here in the M4190 GF to pull up beside me so we can double tap him if he comes around the corner, but it doesn't actually quite look like he's coming around the corner. I wonder if he's a little nervous, considering I am still over here. He might think I'm over here, he might think I might have left. We don't really know what he's thinking right now, but we do know that he's not coming around, and so I'm believing we need to make a move. 
considering I know I can take a hit from him, we're going to move up and we're going to try and take him out. And there he is. If we waited a little bit longer, we might have been able to get a shot on him. I do a kind of a bad thing here. I pull up a little bit too much. I take a hit. Still on 74 health. I know he'll have like a 10 second reload. Pull around to the side. Blast a heat shell right into him. The rev gets spotted by the scorpion. We're easily able to take out the VK. And this is when I just realized that the rev is there. And... Kaboom! We got taken out. Not too much we could have done there. Unfortunately, the scorpion was unable to get around behind him and take him out. So, we ended off pretty good. 8 kills, 3,026 damage. Kind of close to my standard damage. I like to get at least 3,500 damage in my good top tier mediums. But nonetheless, still a really good game. It's not over yet, though. The STI still in the cap circle. A tier 9 heavy tank sitting in the cap circle the whole game has almost actually capped. He's got 30 seconds left. The Scorpion's trying to get a reset. Unfortunately, he's bouncing, maybe not firing heat rounds, even though the AP still have some pretty decent pen of, like, 217. I don't think it's enough at the angle he was shooting at the STI to take him out. Luckily, he finds the Rev. He saw it as repair kit. His gun got damaged from him, and he was able to take him out. So now all they have to do is rush this STI, or ST1, again, if you prefer. M41, nice, able, nicely able to get a nice reset there. Resetting back down to zero. The STI decides it's not worth the cap anymore. He gets out of the cap. Shoddy here tries to get another shot on him. The Scorpion is going above the STI, and this is where things could have gone really bad. He almost loses his tracks. Just because he has one millimeter armor all the way around, he takes 200 damage just touching the STI. And I kept yelling at him, shoot at the turret, shoot at the turret. All he has to do is wait because the STI shot in frustration and he just has to get one more damaging shot. One more shot. Come on, Scorpion. I know he's going to get taken out, but the M41 is coming around behind. Is he going to be able to get him? He bounces. This could be really bad. All he has to do is get one more shot. That tank does have a really good reload and he is able to take him out with a nice shot there on the back of the engine deck, taking out that tier 9 tank on 170 health and winning this game for the team. Thank you so much, Shoddy444, for winning this game, because it was just an absolute amazing game to have. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video of me playing the AMX30 on El Halif in this nice tier 9 game. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Stay tuned, we're going to be taking a quick look at the post-game stats to see how we did in this battle and see what the AMX-30 is really made of and what it can really do in the post-battle results screen. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the El Haluf AMX-30 post-battle results screen. We're ch just checking out the medals here. We got a second class mastery badge, duelist, fire for effect. We got a Radley Walters medal for killing eight or nine enemy tanks. We got a Nadids medal for killing th at least three light tanks in the battle and a Top Gun for scoring over six or at least six kills during the battle. We also got a profit of 51,345 credits as well as 3,758 experience. And checking out the team score here, we can see that we did not the most amount of damage, but still a decent amount, 3,430 with 1,089 base experience with their 8 kills. As well, we finally fired really 20 shots, 15 hit, 12 penetrated, did a little bit of damage over 300 meters, not too much. But in the end, considering I did fire some heat rounds, and they are quite expensive, we didn't make any money. We actually lost 5,845, but still, we made a decent amount of experience, almost 4,000 experience for a times two. That's actually pretty good. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed this video of me playing in the AMX-30. If you did, feel free to give it a like, or if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe for some more amazing content by me. And I hope to see you guys in another video. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you later. Bye-bye!